crucified. Crucified, laid beyond the stones, you live to die, rejected hand alone, like a rose, trampled on the You took the fall And you thought of me Above all Yes, you were crucified Laid behind the stone You lived to die Rejected hand alone like a rose trampled on the ground. You took the fall and you thought of me above all. One last time, say crucified. Laid behind a stone You live to die Rejected and alone Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall and you thought of me, you took the fall, you took the fall. Mm -hmm. And you thought of me, you took the fall, you took the fall. Hallelujah. And you thought of me, you thought of me, you took the fall. My God. And you thought of me above all. Hallelujah. Good morning. I am Reverend Denise Cunningham Doggett and my co-labor minister, Serena Mangum. We come this morning on behalf of Speak Life Ministries, where we come to give you an encouraging word to edify you on this second day in the week of Holy Week. It's an opportunity for us to be able to encourage one in another in the Word of God. So I would ask this morning, take an opportunity to like and to share. Share right there on your page. Share to somebody else. If you're listening on, on your cell phones, like and share to someone else so that they can get this Word on today. It's an honor and a privilege every time that we gather, but on this Holy Week, this is an opportunity for us to learn more about the love of Jesus and the journey that he took to Calvary. Yes. On this morning, on this second day of Holy Week, we will reflect and remember, but more importantly, we will honor the journey of Jesus. Today, it's an opportunity for us to pray and to seek God's face about his goodness and his tender mercies so that we would take an opportunity even right now just to come right into the kingdom yes. and to honor God. God, we just thank you and we praise you for your word today. God, we thank you for your word on today, God, that you would allow it to be able to minister to the hearts of your people. Somebody is on their way to work this morning. Uh-huh, they're hearing it on the radio. There's somebody today that's sitting there in their kitchen or sitting at their table, Jesus, that you would touch their hearts even right now. Somebody needs this word. They didn't even want to get it. But God, we just thank you right now for the setup today. We thank you, God, for somebody to be encouraged and edified along the way. So, God, I thank you even right now that you would bless the vessels that will worship you and honor you in singing and honor you in praising you and honor you in preaching and declaring your word. So, God, we just honor you for those that would have an ear to hear and eyes to see what the gospel has. God, we come up against all these distractions on today. God, that you would still be glorified. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we pray and we say amen. 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 
This morning, it's an opportunity for us to honor God in worshiping Him in spirit and truth. It's a blessing each time we gather. I'm going to make the introduction so I can move right out of the way so that they can, so the Holy Spirit will be able to have its way on this yes. morning. Today, as we gather, our worship leader for today that will be singing praises unto God is one as a psalmist, evangelist, Lucretia Colston Bolden. Those who've known Lucretia in the city of Cleveland know yeah. she has one that will make his praise glorious. Not only does she look like she makes his praise glorious, she begins to usher us right into the presence of an almighty God. Amen. I'm going to ask for her to be able to come and to share in song. Following Lucretia will be one, there's no lack of the preach word today. My dear brother, Reverend Jimmy Gates, who is the senior pastor of Zion Hill Missionary Baptist Church located on Kinsman Road in Cleveland, Ohio. Jimmy is one as an advocate for the city. He's one that reaches out for the lost, has a passion for the lost and outreach. I know his heart and his passion because I've seen him journey along the way. He is my brother in Christ. It is a joy not just to say he is my brother, but yes. to be able to know who he is. I love his wife, Janet, wonderful woman of God. I, I Even in a season when he didn't have a wife, she was answered to prayer. I remember praying for him, saying that, God, that you would send him somebody to love. And so we praise God for that. Y'all better say amen today. Amen. Throw me some hearts on that. Knowing that my brother Jimmy will be able to come and to preach a word, you, declaring God's word. Our theme for is fix your eyes upon Jesus. Mm -hmm. I need to say that again. Just put it on the line this morning. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. The next voice that you will hear will be that of the psalmist evangelist, Lucretia Colston Bowden. Following that will be the pastor and the preacher of the hour. Pastor Jimmy Gates. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration to you, God. For you are God and there's none other above you. So today I can say I love you more than anything. I love yes. you more than, than everything. I love you, Jesus. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign for you are God and God alone you, because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you yes. this song and I just want to say that I love you more more than anything Ooh, I lift my hands in total adoration unto you Lord you reign on the throne for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song and I just want to say that I I love you more than anything oh Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything, more than everything, God. Yeah. 
talking about a building and when he told them that you tear this one down I will rebuild it again three days later he ascended out of the grave with a declaration that I've got all power in my hands I can defend but yet I will destroy that's love oh God we thank you for loving us unconditionally even when we don't love ourselves oh God you still Look beyond our faults and you see all of our needs. That's real love. Ooh. 
that's love real love oh love thank you Lord Jesus oh that's love that's love amen you ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise wherever you are even if you're driving in your vehicle, somehow finagle the way to say, Lord, I just want to thank you. We have come this morning on this cloudy day, oh God, here in Cleveland, Ohio. But Lord, it's ironic that we're talking today about a cloud of witnesses. So we know that you have ordained and sanctioned those that are already there to be with you. But there is still a remnant of us left, oh God, waiting to be called home by that that phrase that you said well done thou good and faithful servant that we might join those that are a part of the great witnesses of Christ and we honor you today oh God bless your word and we thank you father that you have given me the opportunity to proclaim the word of God that someone might hear me oh God and hear your word and turn their life over to you and it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray. Our soon coming King. Amen. To my dear sister, who always is on the battlefield, Pastor Denise Cunningham Doggett, and to the Psalms that was here today, my dear sister Lucretia Bolden, and to Maestro, my, as I said earlier, I don't know anyone that has commitment to the Lord and his work like Serena Magnum. I'm so grateful that she has come out today, not feeling the best, but still giving God her all. And to all that are in the sound of my weak voice, we give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who, contrary to popular belief, is still the great head of the Christian church. Amen. And we honor him today and we serve him and we lift up his name. How ironic today here we are. Some 55 years ago, when the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, and obviously those that were a part of the scheme, they did not have their eyes on Jesus. For if they would have been focusing on Jesus, they would not have went through with this horrible crime for a young man uh, that was taken away from us all too early. And I was sharing with Pastor Cunningham that even on yesterday after a powerful noonday prayer meeting and we were talking about the value of your life. Uh, some five and a half hours later, a young man within 500 feet from the church that God has blessed me to pastor obviously was overwhelmed with life difficulties and decided to take his life in broad daylight. So we pray for that family and we continue to pray for our neighborhood in the Mount Pleasant community that we will continue to walk the streets of kinsmen and union and letting a sinful world know that Jesus still saves. Today, a uh, protocol has already been established uh, in the 12th chapter of Hebrew. And, uh, Pastor, I hope you don't mind that I feel I need to include verse 1 in Amen. this text. Amen. Uh, for I believe uh, it, it's a prelude to what God is telling us in verse 2, so we are Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The writer that many have ascribed to the apostle Paul, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And my brothers and sisters, we need to have tunnel vision today. And Paul is saying that we're looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And if, again, I want to use as a theme that has already uh, been established. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. But I want to add a caveat to that. And I want to look at, at myself and make it personal. I'm locked in. Mm -hmm. 
Fix your eyes on Jesus. And I'm, I'm inviting you today. You need to be locked in on Jesus. There's so many distractions in our lives. But if you are locked in on Jesus, they won't overwhelm you and they will not overcome you. You see, as I looked at this text, I couldn't help but reflect on chapter 11, where many of us have coined this subdivision as a rendition or a version of Heaven's Hall of Fame. Can I get a witness? As I look at today's standards, and the movies have a Hall of Fame, the music have a Hall of Fame, the arts have a Hall of Fame, and many of them have played a price in order to enter into that Hall of Fame. There are some that have the accolades, but even never made it to the Hall of Fame. But to get to Heaven's Hall of Fame, all it requires for you is to believe on the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness? For if we don't hold firm and stand fast on verse now, verse 1, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But look what Paul says in verse 6. He says, he solidifies his definition by proclaiming to the reader, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see, my brothers and sisters, Paul is telling us that there is danger while being wishy-washy on this Christian journey. And there is no way you can fix your eyes on Jesus. That is, if you want to walk with Jesus and you want Jesus to walk with you. Amen. You see, it is no coincidence that Paul says, now faith, and but without faith. The word now means at the present time or at that moment. We are to now have faith for something that is we are believing God to do, whether it is today, tomorrow, or sometime in the future. But without faith, when you don't trust God, when you don't believe in God and your eyes are not fixated on somebody else, I need you to know this morning, it's a time for a spiritual optical examination. I'm not sure what caused your vision to become blurry. But I recommend a man by the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness? Amen. He can clear up your eyesight just like he did blind Bartimaeus. You see, my brothers and sisters, the saints of old, were looking not only for a city whose architect and builder was God, but also to a person, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who can give you 2020 spiritual vision. By faith, they saw Christ. And after getting a glimpse of Jesus, they decided to fix their eyes on him. For it was this vision of Christ that motivated them to endure. To do what, Jimmy? To run this Christian race and see what the end is going to be. So as we look at this text and we set the scene, the imagery created by the Apostle Paul, who is widely accepted by theologians as the writer of this book, is like a race in the Colosseum in ancient Rome. You see, those Old Testament saints, they have finished their race. Can I get a witness? Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and many others, they have already finished their race. They saw the finish line at death, but they crossed over by faith. Multitudes have been a part of the same race. They also crossed the finish line. So my brothers and sisters, that great cloud of witnesses is growing even as we speak. As believers, one by one, we cross the finish line and we take our place as an audience of those great cloud of witnesses. You see, this group is like a roaring crowd and a track meet. And not only have they left an example, but they are literally cheering us on as we run this race. The sound is deafening as each believer today finishes the race. But Paul challenges you and I today while we're running. You see, every runner in a race ought to have a strategy of running the race. You studied your opponents, and you ought to know the tendencies of your opponent, when they might slow down, when they might coast, or when they might run at full speed. Well, you need to know this morning, the enemy, Satan, has studied our tendencies as well. He knows our weaknesses. 
He knows when, where, and how to catch us off guard. Just like he knew that Jesus was tired when he came out of the wilderness after fasting for 40 days. And then he pounced on Jesus with some enticing words. And if Jesus had not had his eyes fixed on his father, he would have faltered. No wonder he told the enemy, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. In him only will I serve. You must have a plan while you're training for this race. Amen. So Paul gives us two strategies in this text while we're running the race. He says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin. My brothers and sisters, the Christian life is an endurance race. It's not a sprint. It is a marathon. And we desire to finish this race strong. Can I get a witness? And one key to finishing well is to become an aerodynamic. Or you got to be sleek, not slick, but sleek as possible. You see, runners wear light clothing and they use light shoes. A marathon winner must be foolish to drag behind him a 50-pound weight while he runs the race. It would slow him down tremendously and wear him out prematurely, which causes distractions in the race. Can I get a witness? It reminds me of David when he went to check on his brothers when Goliath was winning rampant. And when he got there, Saul said, take my armor for this battle that you're about to get in. And David looked at the armor and he looked at Saul. He said, I don't need your armor. I've come with Jesus to fight this battle in this race. And I'm going to take this Philistine giant out. All you need is Jesus while you're going through this race. You see, Paul compares this weight to sin. And in the same way that dragging a weight behind us, running slows us down, the weight of sin keeps us from living a life that's pleasing to God. No wonder Pastor Paul, he gives us some biblical sound advice. He says, let it go, cut it loose, lay it aside. Well, my second strategy that Paul recommends is, he says, let us run this race with endurance. Yes. My brothers and sisters, we are to run the race that is set before us and set aside the weight of sin. You can't focus on the prize if there are distractions that cloud your view. The text says that we must have endurance. Well, there's Paul saying here as he closes out verse 1 and he writes, he says, run with endurance the race that is set before us. According to Rupster, endurance means that you need to develop some stamina for this race. You need to have some intestinal fortitude and some strength that's going to be preparing you for this race. For the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, the A section of verse 11, he advises us how to run a Christian race. He says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. You see, this means that even if you're not the smartest, if you're not the strongest, you're not the most knowledgeable or best looking in the natural, God can still give you some good success when you depend on his grace and you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Can I get a witness? Just like Moses had to run the race and Joseph had to run the race, we too have our race that we must run. But our race is not like your race. My race is not like your race. And your race is not like my race. Our race is unique to whoever we are. Everyone's life is different. Our sovereign Lord has placed each of us in a different course in our race. Can I get a witness? And I'm so glad that during my race, God has promised me, Jimmy, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Ain't God all right? So as I get ready to close in my third and final point, Paul says, Jimmy, looking unto Jesus, the founder and perfecter, the alpha and omega, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Can I get a witness? And he's seated on the right hand of the throne of God. 
Let us always be challenged not to look behind while you're running a race. Because if you look behind, you might fall. If you look behind, you're going to lose focus. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus while you're running this race. Ain't God all right? I want to thank you, God, for holding on to my unchanging hand. I've had some moments while I was running this race, but you kept on by my side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for holding me, for keeping me, for sustaining me, that I might keep my eyes looked on Jesus. I'm glad that David wrote, I will lift up mine eyes. I can't look down. I can't look sideways. I can't look behind me. But David said, Jimmy, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. That's where my help comes from. My help, my help, my help, my help, my strength, my redeemer comes from the Lord. Keep your eyes fixated on Jesus. Life is going to come with some distractions, my brothers and sisters. Satan is not happy when you decide to lock in on Jesus. He's going to come at you, and most times he comes at those that are close and near to you. Just like he came at Job. Even Job had to tell his wife, you talk as if a foolish woman, because I know who will keep me. I know who my redeemer is. And I'm going to trust in God until I die. So I submit to you today. Don't worry about what has happened. I'm not concerned about yesterday. I can't do nothing about it. But today, I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. Looking unto him, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him. Did you get that text? For the joy knowing what he was about to endure, knowing that he was about to get the spikes in his wrist, the spikes in his ankle, the crown on his head, and the spear in his side for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross. And the songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone? In all the world, <laughs> Go free. No, no, no. There's a cross for everyone. And Lord, thank you that you save one a cross for me. I promise, oh God, no matter what goes on in my life, what matter has gone on in my life, I'm going to keep my eyes fixated, looking upon the cross that has been set before all of us. God bless you. May you enjoy this special, sanctified, consecrated week of Holy Week. Dedicate your life back to Christ. He's standing ready, willing, and able. He says, whosoever will. You might have been a drug addict. You might have been a whoremonger. You might have been whatever. He says, whosoever, a liar, a cheat, a murderer, whosoever will. Let them come. Don't let anybody try to talk you about your past. Let them know who your future is and who it belongs to. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We praise God for that word today. Thank you, Jesus. As Pastor Jimmy was sharing the word about the love of Jesus. And keeping our eyes fixed on him. sinner like me, Lord. Thank you. Every time the word goes forth, there's an opportunity for someone to say yes to his will and to his way. A simple scripture in John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish. So grateful but shall have everlasting life. So grateful. This morning, God, that that invitation is still being offered today. To someone who's watching this virtually, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. 
You don't know him. You know of him, but you don't, you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Today's your day. And maybe it's somebody that's watching that you've had a relationship with Jesus, but guess what? Who moved? Mm. <laughs> well, he still draws, he desires yeah. to draw you closer to him so you can come back and fellowship with him. You're knocking at the door. So today is your day. Yes. So today I'll offer a prayer, a sinner's prayer. Mm. Do you know that the scripture says that we are all sinners saved by saved. grace? All sinners. Reverend Denisha, you are a sinner. I'm just a sinner yeah, saved yeah, by yeah, grace yeah, today. Yeah. Pastor Jimmy, yes, yes. just a sinner saved, saved by, by grace. grace. Thank you, Lord. You so today is sufficient. As we give the sinner's prayer, I'd ask that you would pray this with me for someone to draw closer to him and accept, accept him as your personal savior. Today, Lord, I, I'm just a sinner, God, and I, I ask for forgiveness today of my sins. God, I believe in your son, Jesus, and I, I, I believe that you died for me. I believe, God, that you rose for me and I believe that you're coming back again. God, I thank you that you would come into my heart on today. I believe in you. It's in Jesus' name. It's as simple as that. If you said that prayer today, welcome to the body of Christ. If you're not real clear and you're not real sure, you can just put it on the line and you can inbox me. I'll be able to share a little further about what it is because it's the acceptance of Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. that we are believers. Oh, yes. And then there's further instruction that I want to give you about how to be disciples Hallelujah. along the way so that you can be able to go to a Bible-believing church you, so Jesus. that you can be able to be encouraged yeah, yeah. and built up in your most holy faith. We just praise God for the word on today. Let's praise God. If you said that, you, just put Bless it on the line today. Bless you, Lord Jesus. We praise God for those who are believers accepting Jesus Christ. And we praise God for the word from Thank Pastor you, Jimmy Gates Thank on you, today. Jimmy you, was Jesus. preaching like it was Sunday morning up in here. You, Amen. We praise God for that word, but we thank you that that word will not come back void. It's a blessing each time that we gather to share yeah. God's holy word. On today as we gather, it's an opportunity through this Lenten season that we have been able to be able to have a time. On Wednesdays, we've been intentional in our prayer time. Yes. Pastor Denise has been opening a prayer line uh, from 7 to 8, and we've Amen. been working through themes of forgiveness, yes. things, themes of what Jesus has taught us about our, his character and how we, too, have to be disciples of Jesus Christ. We're bearing the fruits of the spirit of long suffering, showing love, kindness to one another. Yes. But it also teaches us how to sacrifice and how to give. There are some times that we've been giving throughout this Lenten season where we've been given a sacrifice of praise. Wow. We've been fasting and praying. I was telling people that the difference in a fast is spending our time and being intentional yeah. about our time with Jesus. Not yeah. just thinking about 20 ways of how we're going to eat again. Oh, y'all going to get that later. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's an opportunity for us to meditate. It even tells us that some things come by fasting mm. and prayer. Yeah. Yeah. You've been praying, but I encourage you to put a fast with that yes, to draw closer to the Lord. On today, our sacrificial offering and our giving is going to homelessness. I say homelessness because it's an opportunity for us to give. Well. In Matthew 25, it says to us, the part of Speak Life Ministries of our mission and our call of outreach is when, when I was naked, did you clothe me? Yeah, yeah. When I was hungry, did you yes, feed me? My God. When I was in prison, did, did you God. come see about me? Mm. These are the, the, uh, the acts and the missions of the church. Hallelujah. So there are some things that, although our shout and our hallelujah and our praise unto God is good. Yes. But it's also in our giving yes, it is. that you would give a sacrifice this morning. I ask even right now on the line that those who can give and to be able to give throughout this week, we're going to be appealing for a benevolent offering. And I ask that you would give those who have cash app. 
Our cash app address is dollar sign speak life one. That's all one word. Dollar sign S P E A K L I F E, the num- numeral one. And those who give by Zale, if you like to give by Zale, the number is 216 246 3255. Again, that number is 216 246 3255. We are so grateful for those who have already planted seed in the kingdom. If you've already planted seed, we say thank you on behalf of the homeless people and the things that we use are those resources to bless and to be able to encourage those along the way. Ask that you pray for Pastor Denise. I'll be preaching this Sunday, Amen. Easter Sunday from 2 to 4 at Norma Her Women's Center. And my, my delight and my joy is to, to share the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. Just a blessing. So on today, before we close out our broadcast, I thank you again, thank you, Pastor man. Jimmy, for thank coming. You for the invite. Bless you. And it's a blessing. You know, this is my third year doing this as we do this virtual, I call it my Holy Week revival. <laughs> and this year was my probably my latest year in planning. And I'm thinking, oh, well, I'm not, it's not going to come together. And, and each preacher that I call, you know I'm coming. Don't doubt God. You, you know, I know I got my day. I don't know what about the other one. I, I'm going to be here. Now, you know, my brother here. I had to deal with him, but he was here. He's faithful. And I'm so grateful for Psalmist, Evangelist, Lucretia Colston Bowden. Amen. Amen. Still being on the battlefield Amen. for our Lord. Amen. So it's an opportunity each day that we gather. Now, my brothers have been a blessing. <laughs> Jimmy done tried to move the furniture around up in here. But guess what? Uh, My sisters is coming on tomorrow. Amen. Praise God. My sisters. Y'all better say, put it on the line. And my sisters is coming in the house on tomorrow. Sisters in the house. The sisters are going to be in the house. I mean, I don't know what kind of octave or what kind of pitch you're going to be playing in tomorrow. (laughs) But on tomorrow, Dr. Yvonne Pointer from the Hope Haven will be here tomorrow preaching and declaring a a holy word. So we praise God for the faithfulness to serve. So as we end each broadcast, we always want to say a word of missions and outreach. Our missions and outreach, again, is tell the world about Jesus. Tell them about his love. And then as we go, we tell the world. We tell the world about Jesus. This is our theme song. I've done it for years, and Mm -hmm. and Serena puts a remix on it each time we do it. (laughs) But when I started doing missions work and going to Jamaica and to the uttermost parts of the world, I always wanted to feel like I would lead them with a song or lead Mm -hmm. them with a song of endurance. So this is one. I did not write this song, but what I do is I own the right to worship him. Amen. So on tomorrow, tell somebody again about our broadcast. We want yes. to be encouraged along the way. But more importantly, we still want to tell a dying world about a living Savior. So as we close out today, we want you to be encouraged to tell the world yes. about Jesus. Now, you oh, see yes. she's bringing the band in. Uh, she's bringing the whole band and she's a, adjusting, <laughs> adjusting her instrumentation. Tomorrow I'll be back with my flute or something tomorrow. Mm. Y'all, you see she got a remix going with this. Amen. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she probably got a little Motown flavor out here. It is. We've been blessed today. 
We've been blessed today by the word of God. We praise God for a pop. We thank you, God, for the opportunities that evangelist Lucretia Colston reminded us about the love of Jesus in song. We praise God for Pastor Jimmy Gates as he was preaching and declaring God's holy word. We thank God for the word being released about keeping our focus and on the prize, to keep our eyes on the prize. We just thank the Lord for the opportunity of somebody to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. God, we just honor you for this word. It's not by power, but not by might, but by your spirit. God, we honor you for this word today. It's in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ that we pray. And we say amen. 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 Tell the world. Tell the world. Tell the gold. Tell the world. Tell the world. As you go.